Just kidding. Soon it'll be the latest rage. See, it's called a hoodie suit. <laughs> I mean, we've got hoodie footies, we got footie hoodies, we got hoodies that are from rap, we got you name it. So I just figured, well, you know, for the executive type that comes from the ghetto, <laughs> we got the ghetto look. We call it the hoodie suit. <laughs> Hey, don't knock it. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It'll probably catch on and somebody will make a million dollars over it because they'll start marketing suits with hoodies on them. <laughs> Remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I looked at this and... You know, I... I was thinking of what I was going to share and as usual God started talking to me about it whenever he starts talking to me it's always interesting because I hear from God and then I hear from myself I can almost hear two voices going on at the same time it's like God God tells me something to do and I think of all these things of why I should not <laughs> yeah are you sure about that Lord <laughs> you know I don't know you know kind of yes you know and I always know when it's the Lord talking to me because I'm always kind of squirming, you know, kind of like uncomfortably because he has a way of squeezing you. <laughs> Woohoo! Even me. But anyways, oh, back to the devotional, huh? <laughs> well, when I was talking to the Lord today, getting ready to share this devotional. He talked to me about the new year and how in days of old I remember the old days miracles of long ago and from Psalms Alive it was such a beautiful time when they sang that song it says I reach my hand for you once more come and fill my thirsting soul and it says, let me see your kindness, Lord, in the morning. And it has that yearning, reaching out quality that, I don't know how to explain it if you're not Jewish, but <laughs> if you're Jewish, you know. Yeah. There's always seems to be this agonized ache to traditional Jewish songs that reaches out for something that they cannot see someone they cannot know and someone they haven't yet experienced and even as a Christian most Jewish believers will tell you yes we're all one in Jesus and yes we're full of joy you know and yes we've got talents and abilities and you know still blessed and frankly still Jewish but there's still something inside that just <sighs> cries out for the living God something that reaches out in our soul to touch God in a real and fulfilling way, I guess. I guess it won't be until the day that all Israel, because it's once been said by some of the Jewish rabbis that if one Jew suffers, we all suffer. If one Jew is exalted, we're all exalted. And in that idea that they have, it's almost as though because of many of Klal Israel, of all of the Jewish people not knowing God, that we who do know God still feel that yearning for all Israel to be saved. And until the day that Messiah comes and Israel learns to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and stands before the Son of God, the Son of Man, and says, what are these wounds that are on you? And Jesus says to them, these are the wounds I received in the house of my brethren. And I think that we who are Jewish will reach out and ache and yearn for that time. We'll not necessarily be one in unity with our brethren. But we will be as lively stones, you know, set in the pavement for others to walk upon it, though our wisdom may be there for other purposes, we choose to serve and yield to the fear of the Lord and to 
walk in his ways and to acknowledge him as in control of our lives. And that may lead us in a variety of ways. As you can see, many Jewish people, if they know Jesus, if they're Christian, they have gone in a wide variety of ways. I mean, I know, you know Jewish believers that are still in the Catholic Church. Cardinals, even. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Always move up. <laughs> but, anyways, getting off of Jewish. <laughs> but getting off of that, when God was talking to me, I know, you thought I was going to forget. God never lets you forget. I was thinking of 2012, and the Lord spoke to me about being mindful of those who don't know him about well in regards to video what I'm going to do is New Year's is sit down and record to my family my in-laws my outlaws my nieces nephews sisters you know my mother's dad <laughs> but um, my father's <laughs> who knows my father's in heaven <laughs> but the point being is to sit down and record directly, you know, one-to-one, -one, what I know about them, what I pray for them, and what I want for them to hear my heart's cry to them and plead. Because we don't know how much time we have left for us. And so, it says that those names that had served the Lord or that had, you know, worked on the temple were written into a book of remembrance. And I feel this yearning to reach out in some way, you know, to touch my family and to say to each one, recording a separate video, like like my sister Mary Lynn, you know, Chickadee, whom I love, you know, and I never talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's some kind of love. Well, you know, if you want to watch her video, I'll post it. <laughs> It'll be out there. But my entire family will probably be posted with their name, you know, on videos that I'll post up video because it may relate to someone that you have and you feel for and you love and that you pray for. Whether to bless them because my sister Mary Lynn, Chickadee, is, is already saved and has been saved a long time. But other ones like... Like... Uh, <laughs> I was trying to... Melanie, you know, who's really messed up. And to share from my heart, you know, and to be real about it. To share as the Spirit of God would lead me. And to Jeremy, who, as a man who knew God, turned his back and ran away, who is a prodigal at this day, a very avid and adamant atheist, he thinks. He likes to say he's more of an anarchist than an atheist. He wants to play with his pot and drugs and act rebellious. But he's always needing that love inside. He's always needing to find in someone that emptiness to be satisfied. So, you know, writing all these, or recording all these videos and messages to each one, I think is God's way of saying to each one of us today, be mindful of those people who do not know and that you should be praying for in a more intimate way than you ever have before. Because 2012 will be a distracting time, a time of heading off into different directions. And people will forget that salvation is why you were created. You were created to attain to salvation, which is the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and to share that salvation, which is the knowledge that they can be saved and how to be saved, and let them choose whether they would or not. Not to force it down their throat, but to pray for them, to be there for them, to be ready and able at the moment in time that they need you, because it will come. The times, they are changing. God is moving, but he's also moving back in some ways. So, as a last way of remembrance for us to set aside even our families, let's put together, all of us, Maybe a fasting prayer, you know, a, a searching our hearts, a intercession night on New Year's to plead for those who are not saved. And then 
in the night in communion. You and I. Let us, once we are done with New Year's shouting, let's have communion, you and I, together. And let's declare the coming of the Lord and be made one. Because everyone has someone they know that's not saved. And that should be our heart's desire, that all Israel, yes, should be saved, but then also that someone we love and we care about and we hold inside. That maybe we don't talk about much and we don't say too much, maybe we haven't expressed it too much. But now is the time to end the year and pray for a new year that they, God would save them in 2012 so that if He does return in 2013 or 14, 15, 16, maybe 17, you know, right in those those years, you know, anywhere between, usually most people think 2015, 2022, if you live that long. But, you know, if there is a rapture in those years, then they would go. Or as the Lord leads them. But in devotionals, as the world is wrapping up its time span of this year, we need to be mindful that we are eternal beings, that we are going from year to year, forever, from age to age, which is what eternity means. Eternal life means ages to ages life. It is not just the word eternal, but it is a concept in Hebrew. It is a age to age to age to age, which is why some of the cults got off on these weird tangents. But it just simply means that God is doing something in each age and you're going to go through it on a never-ending succession of experiences with God as he does at the end of the book of Revelation tells us at the end of the thousand years of reigning with Jesus in the kingdom age that a new age would begin that he would cause a new heaven and a new earth and what that is we don't know blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel that in a nutshell is your life don't get moved away from the hope of the gospel, which is the salvation of your soul, which is that Jesus came, Jesus died, and Jesus lives again, that we should come into fellowship with him in the knowledge of God our Father, because this is eternal life, that they should know you, Father, and that they should know he whom you have sent. To not know Jesus is to not have salvation. You must know Jesus. If you don't, get it. If you do, give it away. <laughs> there, you know, it's an old expression, but what it means is begin to make disciples of people. Begin to teach them and share with them. Get a video, you know, or get a book. Write for children. I mean, I just recently saw one that I email I wanted to follow up on that said something about um, children's ministry for Jesus or something. I thought, well, that was cool. I've never done a video for them. Maybe, you know. It would be fun to talk to kids. You know, they're a lot easier than adults. <laughs> but maybe I'll do a video for them on New Year's. It's going to be a long night on New Year's Eve. <laughs> but the point being is that we all ought to reach out with what we have within. We can't keep it inside or it putrefies. We have to share what we've been given a calling to do. And God wants you to do that, which is the hope of your calling, the hope of salvation. That you may be blameless and harmless as sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. My prayer, my hope, my challenge to you, my calling 
by resting assured in that which you're watching is that we all would come into the unity of the faith that would be reaching out with our heart and our hand and our words and our deeds to someone who doesn't know Jesus in these few days that remain of this year and then likewise we don't get distracted by the coming year but we become the attraction of the year that our lives as lights in a crooked generation in a deceitful nation in a political social economic upheaval in a time when men would be looking for answers that we would turn their eyes to Jesus because if you're not telling people about God you're not giving them anything you're just putting a band-aid on an open wound and all that's going to happen is that the blood will blow that band-aid away and unfortunately that person will die in their sins so what will you do now today to make a resolution to go forward from this day forth to not just clean up your act but to take your act on the road and to share Jesus with someone else I told you what I will do and watch and see I guess it will be on New Year's Day that I'll probably make enemies of my family <laughs> oh God help me they're gonna crucify me but that's what he said to do so you challenge me if I will do what I have told you that I would do mm -hmm. and then see if I do it and New Year's Day they should be posted on video maybe even on my Facebook page and I hope Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So if I can give you a word, if you're going to do what I'm about to do, you can expect to get crucified, but you can expect to rise again.